We're just hello here. everyone. Hi Chris. Oh, Chris. Hi. Hi Chris. Nice to see you. All right. I think we have everyone on the voting side except for Jesse and and uh, Bob Ike. Oh, Bob Ike is with Bob us. Bob Ike is here. Okay. Perfect. Nancy. Yes. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I cannot uh, delete the start video that's that's uh, eliminated from my screen. And I only have problems with regard to this particular meeting site. None of the other meetings do I have the problem with. Can you give me any advice? I'm still um, showing my name with a black background. My camera is on. Last time I clicked on something to ask you to start the video. So I'm going to do and that. As a matter of fact, what I'm trying to do, you can bring that tab up. I'm seeing it now, but I can't eliminate, eliminate the uh, red line diagonally on the start video icon. I think that's my problem. I cannot eliminate it on my screen. Your camera may not be turned on, Michelle. I think it is turned on. That's the problem. <laughs> Click on the little arrow next to the video, the stop video or the start video, and there's some choices on there. There's no other choices other than start video there. You see the little- but That's okay, oh. I'll just listen. I'll, I'll play around with it and see if I can get it, but this has been an ongoing problem for me. So Michelle, I will just listen. Michelle, do you see the up arrow next to the camera? A little, a little tiny carrot to the right of that start video. There is no carrot. <laughs> I think that's the problem. The icon is not reflecting what I need to happen. Okay. It's something Just in your that is it's something in your video settings. What only happens? I I sit on three other committees. Don't have this problem except with this one. So, mm -hmm. I'll I'll keep messing with it. So please go ahead. Don't wait for me. Very great. Uh, everyone, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you all for coming out. This is our third special meeting. Um, very excited about the progress that we've been making to date. And I want to thank our friends from Taisu Ken and Downs for joining us this evening. Uh, we have uh, one agenda item, and we'll stick to that. And I just want to get right into it. And we, on the agenda, have opened the agenda to public comments. And uh, we'll start off with our public comments and then we'll get into the new business. So Nancy, do we have any comments from the public? Yes, Sten Casperson will be first. And I wanna remind the people from the public that you're limited to five minutes. So I'm going to- Oh, there's Michelle. Okay. There's Sten. Okay, Sten, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Sten Casperson, Six Stone Hill Road. You give me the opportunity for this one purpose meeting to input a personal opinion. Given the processor site selection of the two options to go forward, I personally prefer demolition and build new, given what I've heard from TSKP and what I think I know and have heard about renovation constraints. Mm -hmm. I also see from the independent estimate cost estimates, no cost savings, almost between the two, even though both options are very expensive. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who would like to speak? Raise your hand. I guess there's no one else who wants to speak from the public. Okay, great. Uh, we are going to go into item four, which is new business, uh, discussion and possible recommendation regarding new or addition renovation to the Prosser Library. Uh, and prior to going into our discussion, I'm just going to ask uh, Taisu Kim uh, to give us a brief update on their revised uh, plan. Hey, let me just bring it up. Uh... Okay, well, I'm going to talk and just, uh, you saw these drawings before, just uh, the purpose of this presentation is to re refresh your mind uh, 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 what you see. This is a 
for the site selection and uh, we stated that they really uh, uh, are combining all major building within the center of a uh, con first congregation of church, the town hall, and cross a uh, library uh, across the street from Center Green, which is very appropriate, making a uh, uh, very strong uh, center. And uh, we didn't write down the road name, but there happened to be three, no, four, three or four different roads coming together. Mountain Avenue, Broomfield Avenue, and Park Avenue, and then Thompson's. So that corner is 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 a really uh, uh, important uh, cross uh, road of the town. Now uh, I show this uh, red dot is a major industrial walkway, but most important, I guess, uh, uh, point uh, two new or uh, press libraries that uh, corner like two, yeah, right there and making the interest from uh, that side. And we stated that uh, this uh, uh, bridge connect uh, crossing uh, Brook and then going to Northwood is uh, uh, connecting to uh, develop future possible connection to the park. So next. So uh, this was uh, the, the drone we showed you. And the last time, a couple of people asked uh, what the main interest is from Mountain uh, Avenue. No, it is not. It, you can see this arrow shows uh, from the town side, uh, that's, that's the way you come in. And uh, you see from there, there is a land drops. So almost uh, uh, the cargo under the building. So, it's a one-story drop. So there is no uh, access from the mountain road directly to the building. You have to go to that corner. So there is one uh, uh, main entry to the building from the town side. Uh, of course, from uh, the other side, western side, or new park, uh, and then you walk to a bridge and come to this uh, wide public porch. So actually this entire porch is the entrance, but access where, where is uh, both end of this porch. Okay. Next. So uh, we were asked to look at the reductions of the building and we tried and basically we didn't change the floor plan, but we tried to reduce about five to 10% of the square footage. And uh, it's not, no problem reducing uh, a little bit. So this exercise we done uh, reduced from 29,000 square feet to 28,6. So maybe about 1,000 square feet. And I think this purpose is trying to reduce the cost uh, of the building. But I have to remind you that uh, let's say uh, 1,000 square feet is, let's say, 7%. But you're not going to reduce cost by 7% because you, you have everything here and just shrinking the envelope does not uh, uh, go or same proportion. So maybe half of that, three and a half percent. I mean, there's things like the stairs, the yeah. elevators, and the toilets that don't ch change as the right, building right. gets shrunk and slightly. So, so that's why the cost. Yeah, so not proportional. So I, I my recommendation is uh, uh, you really, if you really wanted to be trying to reduce the cost, you have to go substantially, like a twenty six thousand square feet. Then you might reduce uh, building construction cost by ten percent. That's your your decision. But uh, current our recommendation is let's try to stay below 29,000 square feet and stay with the budget downs uh, proposed. But it's your decision if you order to uh, really lower the budget. What it is is basically relationships are all good. 
So everything goes in proportionally. Uh, so this plan is a CAD rule plan and chewing relationship. It's about the same as hand drawn uh, drawings. Next. Now, this is addition drawings and uh, a site plan. Uh, because of the existing building and new building to the uh, north of the existing building. So main entrance and uh, entryway will be just north of the existing building. And so, as I mentioned before, you have two uh, entrances, one from the parking lot, which is not very visible uh, from uh, other public area. And also then the other side, and I see that uh, main, that entrance is not very much used. Uh, and it's away from that corner of a major pedestrian uh, gathering point. Uh, and it, it's very difficult to uh, control this uh, community room after a library hour, uh, because you see, you, you can open to the north side, uh, Tangsa Street side, street open, but most people are park at their parking lot. So you can go around and it's just not traffic, I don't know, not good. And I, uh, I pointed out uh, the building that due to uh, we are using existing building, the spaces are broken up, so you really don't have a large open space within the library. And uh, also I pointed out uh, existing building is uh, about five feet higher than uh, street. So, so we end up uh, creating a ramp within the building. And this is a, a floor plan. Uh, we tried to reduce some of but we really couldn't because it just uh, as a nature of uh, using existing and, and wrapping around the uh, existing building, it become uh, less efficient. That much as you can see, circulation space taking up substantial uh, floor, floor area. And at the top floor, uh, I pointed out that existing building has a sloped roof. So you cannot put the uh, whole of building against slope roof, you know, snow or water. So, so you have to build up the flat roof uh, beyond the peak of the slope roof. So it become quite an awkward massing situation. Uh, one story high existing building and two stories high a uh, new building wraps around. Uh, it's, it's inherently very difficult architectural uh, problem, how to create good combined uh, architectural uh, building out of this things. And, and I, I like to say it, it, it's gonna be very difficult to make good building out of this. Uh, and uh, as a, the construction manager stated that uh, even though this we are uh, building existing addition, uh, not as big as the entire new building, but yet the exterior envelope is about the same. <laughs> so we have so many uh, uh, different, two different levels and wrapping around. So even uh, uh, efficiency wise is not good. And one thing I'm concerned about, we are mouth blowing the basement, right? And uh, you cannot just shut down the ba basement. You have to circulate air constantly uh, to prevent any uh, mold building within the uh, inside the building. But I do afraid, uh, you know, uh, building that uh, basement area, mold building, and smell seeping come upstairs. And this is a wood building, so it will be uh, some uh, smell issue inherent within the building. One other thing, just relative to the upper floor of uh, Prosser, uh, this is the upper floor, uh, but in fact, a good portion of this is not really 
very usable because of the roof slopes. The roof is pitching down on the two sides. And of course, you've got dormers on the street side. So the area that actually has full headroom is just this middle section here. And then there's a corridor down to the other fire stair. The other areas, the, the ceiling is dropping. And, and this is sort of a mechanical space and storage. So there's not a great deal of, of space in here to use. So, so I think what the plan is currently showing is taking over some of this middle section for a new mechanical space. That's, that's, that's it. That's that's it. That's that's it. And uh, uh, the elevation of uh, this attic space or upper level and uh, uh, proposed new buildings elevation is very different. So it's connecting two together with a real challenge too, you know, so. And then we're okay. going to McMahon. Uh, yes, and McMahon. Okay, uh, this is the McMahon uh, plan we showed to you last time. And uh, uh, this is kind of uh, uh, what we I thought uh, good uh, dimension and came out uh, 9,600 square feet. Uh, quote on the existing plus new and uh, we were told it's too big. So we shrunk it and uh, see how much we can shrink. So here is a plan and uh, uh, dimension before was 20, the top part. We, that, right yeah, that part was 24 feet before and shrunk to 20 feet. And I think anything less than 20 feet it just not be able to make the room uh, size right and uh, not usable or cafe or that uh, collaborative space and so on. So we end up uh, 86, 88 or 86? 89. 89. So, you know, I, I mean, to make sensible decision for this edition, I think you really have to think about uh, just shy of 9,000. The 8,000 will be very difficult to achieve. So that's really conclusion of our, uh, uh, you know, just to revisit. And uh, so uh, if you have any question, please ask. Well, yeah, I do. It's Bob, I, I, have, my, I have my hand up. Uh, I, I'm still getting confused on the size of the existing building. You're calling it 6,000. And what I saw on the town site and what Downs has is, is uh, 5,400. Yeah, I think that's a mistake. 5,400. 50, no, that's a mistake, 6,200. I'm sorry, we have not. We remajored it and uh, it's 5,400. There, I think one of the discrepancies is that there's the, the footprint of the enclosed floor space, and then there's uh, some of the property cards and things from the, from the town uh, includes the overhang here and the overhang at the entry that I think bring it up to the 6200. Yeah. So that's where the difference is. Yeah. 54, we measured it uh, from existing drawing. It's 5400 existing. And, and the addition is about 3,200 3, square feet. Oh, so it's not the 28 night? Uh, I think that's a mistake. Yeah. I think Archna did this. I think it's, uh, we'll need to verify that. That's yeah, we will verify that. But I think what we... The previous uh, addition yeah. was 3,400 square feet. Yeah. And this is slightly reduced. Yeah, so it may be around 3,000. Yeah, maybe, maybe we just combine two together uh, we have to check this math, and maybe it's uh, 86 or some, yeah. uh, oh, something like that. So what is it? I think she made some. What, what's the addition? This, this is saying Maybe 8,300 8, square feet. 8,300? Yes, yes. So that's a mistake. We apologize that. Uh, I think she did not change that. Yeah. 
8300. 80, so if we just uh, nail down this um, maximum is about 8300 square feet, that will do it. Okay, perfect. All right, any other questions before we turn it over to Downs to go over the numbers? I have a question. Um, with respect to the uh, new bill, can you please clarify where the main entrance is on the new build? The, the, the sketch. Yeah, there is a new. There. So with the new build, here's the new building. Right. Is it facing mountain or is it facing? Is the main entrance on mountain or Tunxis? Well, Tunxis. It's facing Tunxis. I mean, this, this is. It, this era, this triangle represents mm -hmm. main entrance from the yeah. town side, and this okay. is the main entrance from crossing the bridge from the. Uh, okay, so you can enter on Tunxis. That's that right. was my concern. Right. Yeah. And there will be a wall. Can you indicate the wall from? Yeah, no, no. Right yeah, here? that yeah. there will be a wall there because you see land slopes. Right, back. this is sloping down. Yeah, it's sloping down. So the, the, there will be a wall there so that. Uh, uh, defining that uh, paved public plaza area, and I envision that wall on top of the wall will have a very nice stone uh, uh, plaza library uh, sign sign on on that. So this is well defined place and clearly uh, shown that arrow is the main interest. Main interest. And, and I think just in terms of. Diagram of that's a physical entrance to the okay. building. People will be arriving from any of these corners to this mm -hmm. and then plaza uh, area and yes. then enter. Okay. All right. It's, excuse me, I have a question. My hand is up. Maxine, I don't want to cross you. Are you all set? Yes, I am. Okay, then thank you. Um I I have a I have some concerns with the the new the new. Um, with regards to that intersection is not uh, user friendly at times to cross. And my concern is that a person would not be able to pull up to the front of the library or park in the front of the library like they currently can. There are, there are handicapped parking spaces there in front of the library along Tunxis Avenue. And I think we still need to be cognizant of the fact that um, people and elderly people need to have direct access from both entrances to where they're not forced to drive under the library. I don't know what under the library is going to look like. And, 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 and they shouldn't be forced to get to this library park. I think that 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 in front parking that already exists should should still remain and should be taken into consideration with all of these schematics. Because again, neither of these intersections are easy to cross. And so I, I need you to keep that in mind with your designing. Yeah. I, I, I think one, also, one issue with the, the parking in front is uh, this. Well, I, traffic I, circles, which will have an impact, I think, on this intersection. Well, it could possibly have that. You know, I've seen where towns have discussed with DOT what they do and don't want. And if we're going to invest this type of money or any large amounts of money into this library, I think that the town would have a say and should negotiate with the DOT as to if we want two turnabouts or, or one turnabout or turnabouts at all. Sure. Do you understand? Yeah. And so I think that, you know, with this project and this, this town's investment, not the state's investment and in what the state sees for this town, but what we, the people in this town, see for this town, I think that it it would it would be a disservice to the senior citizens that that still drive and that pull up to the front of that library and park in those handicapped spaces that are there. My my other concern is is this bridge. I'm I'm not a, a fan of the the schematics of that bridge. I feel like it 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 just doesn't look good. Now, I don't know what it's going to look like in terms of your overall design, because I don't see an overall design. I would like to see what, what you have here, what this looks like 
to my eye? What are the aesthetics, the external aesthetics as to what you have here? Because you can show me this, but um, I, I still have, I have grave concerns um, with, with this and, and the cost um, and the spacing uh, as well. And so if you can provide me what, what that would look like, um, renovations and new, um, I, I would really appreciate it because just looking at your floor plans isn't really giving me the big picture and the final picture as to what exactly we'll be paying for. Well, that is our next task after you right. decide uh, go with new or renovation addition. And then we will start with promise uh, to you to uh, study exterior and show you what might look like. So that's the next well, step. Well, hold on, let him finish. Let, let, let. Go ahead. Uh, who else has a hand up? Well, I wasn't done. Uh, he and I were still having dialogue, I believe. Are you done, Mr. Kim? Yes. I didn't want to cut you off either. Thank you so much, Mr. Kim. Um, I, I'm trying to understand how how that would be the next step, and it's not all inclusive um, to this step. It's like, say I'm having a house built. I get to see the 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 floor plan designs, but I don't get to see what it actually is going to look like in total. I, I, I'm having a hard time understanding how how this is possible. Well, I, think I don't understand why that's not inclusive to where when making my decision, I have all of the information available to make an informed decision. I, can't, I feel like I can't make an informed decision if I don't see everything. There's certain, certain kind of levels we have to get through. I mean, the, the purpose of this study initially has been to look around the town, look at viable sites, look at the program of the library, and test those sites to determine whether a library could fit in any of those sites, whether it's existing or new. That's really the first task here is to do the test fit, which is what we have been working on. And once we make that decision as to what's the right site and are we doing building new or are we building renovated, then we can take it to the next step in terms of looking at what that would mean. But to develop the design of the building is obviously a part of this the whole design process, the architectural, design, which takes time as a whole nother phase that would follow after this, after the study. Okay, I thank you for that. I thank you for that, Wit, which causes me to have another question. Um, how do we determine if this cost estimate, how does this cost estimate come into play if we don't see everything? It's like we've gone through the stages of location, and, and right now we're at the impasse of um, renovation or new, but how do we get to the final uh, crossing line in terms of making this decision if if that information isn't available. I just don't understand that. Well, it's it's uh, the cost estimating is uh, an evolution during the course of the, the whole project. And so the numbers that I think Downs has developed and they can speak to it as well are okay. so their understanding of uh, buildings and what their costs are, whether they're new or renovated. Uh, and so it's sort of irrespective of, of the detail of the design. It's really, you know, this is how big the building is going to be. If it's new, this is about how much per square foot. All of that will evolve as we develop the design further through the design process. Right. Thank you. All right. Uh, Leah? Oh, um, can I present? Yes. Well, we had a couple of other people with their hands yeah, I don't up. Wanna, um, if they want to go first, and then I'll go. Okay. Lois and Ava. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It's okay. Lois, where are you? I'm I'm coming back. <laughs> Something <laughs> happened. My my question is um, relates to the um, exactly where is the door? Maxine asked that question, and I see that entering the plaza, you'd come from the east to the west. But I thought the door was in the middle of that. Uh, the, the side of the building that faces Park Avenue. Am I wrong about that? 
Yeah, yeah so the, the door, as you come into this arcade along this side from these two entrances, the door is there, or in the, in the new plan, it's right here. So the door is in the middle of that long distance, or is it? Uh, yeah, there's one door here, and then there's another door here for the after hours community access into this corner. Of the so is, is that what you understood, Maxine? No, I understood it to the entrance, the main entrance where you enter from the street is on Tunxis. So that's not actually, you enter the plaza then. You enter the plaza Tunxis. here, and then you enter this covered um, entry portal, this walkway. Oh, OK. You enter I, I misunderstood that. The from the side. And okay. so that's along the whole front of the building. And then you, you come into the uh, enclosed, the heated portion of the library at this point or at this point. Oh, OK. So I guess my question is then, um, if we're considering a new build, is it possible to have the main entrance face Tunxis Avenue where you're actually entering on Tunxis? I mean, I, we could certainly look at that. I think what one of the issues there is uh, as the other, the reno option suggests is having a, an entrance here, your majority of your parking, which is the, the parking that's not underneath this portion of the building is across the stream over to the west. And so you're gonna have a lot of people who drive coming to the site from this side. And so then you end up with, with entrances on both sides of the building, which is awkward from a library security standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. It's not ideal. Well, I, I would say uh, this, that's why it's a difficult, uh, this is very conceptual plan and it's a, the first our idea and a uh, lot of things do, where is the door going to be and uh, how certain things are uh, placed that we're gonna spend a lot of time working with you, work that out. And I think uh, there is enough uh, information here, uh, uh, whether it's uh, building a new building on the site is a good idea versus uh, keeping the existing building and uh, add on to it. And after that, we will go into next step and working with you work on all your concerns. But I think at this stage, uh, with the doorways and so on, we can bog down all kind of things. And uh, uh, I, I think we, that, that would be a next step. And that's why I'm afraid of showing in a, such an early conceptual stage, uh, floor plan, because people start to questioning certain things. Uh, some people like this, some people don't like that, and so on, so on. Uh, and so, uh, uh, please look at this, it's just conceptual floor plan. It's just starting point. There will be a lot of changes after we really work together to make this one work. Thank you. Well, I, I just had a question about the lower level. Um, yes where all of the parking is underneath? And it's just a quick question. Is there an entrance yeah. at that part? It looked to me on the plan like there was an entrance um, from that parking in the okay. lower level. That's, that's exactly, this is, I'm sorry, this is turned sideways. Yeah, that's uh, right. So this is Tunxis, I mean, Mountain Road right here. Right. Uh, and Tunxis is out front. So the lower level with this concept is you're entering from this no, direction. no, no, the interior from well, you can either enter from either, yeah. actually. Exactly. Oh, okay. um, so you can either turn in from here or come in from down the hill. So there's parking spaces underneath the building, and there'd be handicapped spaces here. And then uh, a little ramp. ramp brings you up into this uh, lobby where the elevator is. There's also a stair. So for handicapped, you could park right here, come up into the, take yeah. the elevator. elevator up, and then you're up cool. into the Just lobby. like you're doing today. Uh, the reason we raised that is front plane of this site is 115. So uh, we uh, uh, are just on or above front plane so that this elevator still uh, area is, is not going to be flooded. And 
Right now, your law building hundreds to 10 feet, two feet below the flood plain. So, you know, this is a lot of people going to park here and uh, come right into a stair or elevator come right above that uh, lobby area. So. Okay, thank you. If there are, I want to turn it over to Downs. I didn't see any more hands. Bob Berman, your hand is up. Did you already no. ask your question? No, I have another. Okay. Uh, my other question is, when I go back, I see you, uh, you were talking about a separate entrance to the community room and, uh, and the bathrooms for after library hours use. Uh, why do we have why do we have that for after hours use? The library's not open. Well, I think it's a programmatic thing which can be confirmed by the library, but generally libraries like the ability to have uh, an event space available after the hours. So the rest of the library can be closed in the evening and you can still have an event in this room and doing that allows you to have toilets. If, if a cafe is nearby, then you are, you're able to have an event with with food or drink. Um, so that as a way to, to kind of break off this section to have it secured so that can be used when everything else is, is shut down. So I mean, that's often what many libraries uh, look to have and, and that's the, the goal in this case. Right. Thank the reason you. I raise that is that's duplicating what we have the human services building. That's right. All right. Well, I agree with Mr. Berman. Can we do away with that in that, that community area? I mean, we already have a lot of community area space. I don't think that we need to duplicate that by adding an additional after our community space there at the library. You know, folks, I, I, I think I, I that, think that these are great I, discussions, but those are not items for tonight. We are not debating on the square footage and the spacing of the library. We wanted to get through this presentation and Downs is gonna present, then we are going to discuss uh, the issue on the agenda, but this is not to discuss space requirements tonight. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it over to Downs so that they can go over the cost estimates. Thanks, Greg. Um, just to, uh, um, just to answer the earlier question about um, cost estimating versus not having all of the information, um, the, the cost estimates that we do at this stage in the conceptual level really are based on historical data that we <coughs> from other libraries that we have built. And as Whit had said, uh, the, the process, the way the process really is best to work is that we, we do this high level conceptual estimate uh, based on historical data and square footage and, and our knowledge of what goes into these buildings. And then when, um, when Taisu Kim comes, comes up with a, a, a schematic design estimate, we'll update this estimate. And at the schematic design estimate stage, we can really start to count things. We can start to put quantities on things. And then when we go to the design development level, then we can really put some effort into really quantification and, and, and material selections and, and be a lot. So it's, it's really a refinement process that goes from conceptual to schematic design, to design development, to construction documents. And, and that's in essence how the, how the process works. So, um, so this, uh, this uh, spreadsheet is the spreadsheet that uh, we were working with uh, before we've made some minor modifications to this. Uh, we have changed the square footage to 28,817 on the new option. And uh, I, would I would absolutely agree with Tai Su Kim that there are certain things in the estimate that will change and save money, uh, but there are other things that will not change um, because we're not making a significant change in the square footage. And so that's what this spreadsheet is designed to do. Now, on the, on the renovation side, I noticed on the drawing that we were just looking at, uh, we're, we're at 30,500 square feet. And I believe that the current uh, renovation plan is, is closer to 34,000 square feet. Um, so that's gonna make a somewhat of a difference uh, in the fact that the, 
renovation uh, project will be more expensive than the new, um, should we change those? I'm, I'm just not sure. With, I don't know if you guys know how many square feet in the new building versus um, renovation. Um, yeah, I don't. <laughs> no, it, it, it's it's fine. I I thought if you just knew it off the top of your head, I would I would change it. Yeah, I don't know. We, we have yeah, it. No worries. Um, so anyway, we changed this square footage from. If you remember, we were at twenty nine thousand five hundred. We changed it to twenty eight eight seventeen. Um, the 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 things that are affected by the size and square footage have changed. Um, we've reduced this estimated hard cost of construction by about three hundred thousand uh, dollars. That was the effect that it had. Um, in addition to that, we got um, some more accurate numbers on the soft costs previous to this, and we have made those changes. So uh, you can see now that we're at um, on the new build, we're at twenty three million oh fifty eight. On the renovation, we're at twenty three one ninety six. Keep in mind that number will go up if we change the square footage from 30,500 up to 34,000. And we are carrying um, 8,918 square feet, which is what I think was on the drawings. Um, but if that, if that square footage is to, is to go down, then, then this will come down slightly. Uh, but I think this is a good representation of new build versus the renovation and then what we think the revised uh, McMahon library would be um, based on the new square footage. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we, that the library building committee authorize uh, tie, authorize the architect to proceed with a new build at, at the process site. Oh, okay. Thank you, Bob. Is there a second? I'll second that. Mark, okay, we'll open it up to discussion. Leah? You're muted. Leah, you're muted. Yeah, da if uh, Don's can stop sharing, then I can share. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Okay. So um, what I'm sharing here is a document that the uh, space planning subcommittee came up with this these over the past several days. Um, Basically, we, we looked at the two options and we weighed the advantages versus disadvantages. Uh, I'm going to go through these and then I will take any questions at the end, uh, although I do have to leave in 10 minutes, so I'll be quick. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as for renovation addition, as Downs just explained, the, um, the estimated proj project is, uh, if we went with a renovation or addition, uh, it would be $175,000 difference, which is about 0.75% um, cost savings. Um, the architecture matches town hall, although this is something we noted that could be um, built into the a new building design, something that ev evokes the original architecture. Um, obviously, there's a lot of community affection for the original building, and that's totally valid and important. Um, and I might take out the two interests thing, <laughs> um, and that it fronts on the town green. Um, as far as disadvantages, we have that the lower level is three feet below the base flood elevation of the Washbrook, as we are all well aware. Um, the layout, as we all saw, is constrained by existing building structure, so it would be less open and less flexible. Um, because of this, it would require more service points, at least four due to the layout, thus requiring more staffing. Um, the uh, isolated study and meeting rooms, the program and community room are not set are not separate therefore not available after hours um, and again on that point I think I've talked about this before this is a um, this is absolutely baseline for what a public library should have um, based on standards based on the state library standards based on national standards um, it is very common to have an after hour space um, it is also common it is I'm not going to say required, but it is it is the standard for a public library to have a large um, event space um, for library purposes. These rooms are used multiple times a day by all different types of staff. You're not having them bringing all of their materials over to another building, another part of town um, on several times a day. This is a multi-purpose space. 
Um, it serves many purposes. It could serve concerts. It could have art shows. It could have children's programs. It could have people could vote there. There is many, many ways that this room is used and it is an absolute must. Um, the moving on the combining of an old and new construction results in less efficient mechanical and energy systems there is potential for unforeseen remediation costs associated with mold outdated hvac asbestos and etc the proposed roundabout on tungsis could impact the tungsis entrance uh, there is less window or glass facing tungsis on the renovated portion that doesn't allow passersby to view library activities which is something um, we felt was important the architectural plans must blend with the existing building. The cost to blend existing hidden roof lines with the addition, which is something um, Taisu mentioned earlier. Then um, we must build slightly more square footage to accommodate uh, the inefficiencies, which he also noted earlier. Um, as for new construction, uh, advantages we saw as mechanical energy efficiency and modern construction standards uh, reduce long-term operating costs. The, the space is much more flexible and can be readily adjusted as needs change. So um, 10, 20 years down the line, there are fewer service points necessary, uh, which allows for more efficient use of staff time. Um, the obviously I mentioned the community room program room, which I gave a spiel on earlier. Uh, the entrances are closer to parking as we just saw. Um, it would face uh, Tungsis Ave and the Town Green and Mountain Ave. Um, we have also in the Tai Su Kim plan, we have it, that it ties pedestrian access from the Town Green to the Riley property, Washbrook and Philly Park. Um, as for disadvantages, um, obviously there's uh, only one entrance, um, which again, we discussed that. I think that's a little, it needs to be tweaked. And again, um, the, the Estimated cost is 0.75% uh, more, which is about $175,000. Um, Not anymore. <laughs> so um, I welcome questions. I welcome comments on this document. Um, this was a lot of. Hey, Leo, you make reference to service points uh, just for the benefit of the yes, entire group. Sorry. Can you? Can you explain what you mean by service. so you know you go into the children's department and there's the desk and that's where the librarian sits and that's where the kids go to ask questions or they go to get homework help same upstairs a service point is anywhere that staff are located where you walk up to it and you get service that's pretty much all it means when you have um, more corners walls you require more service points because when you walk into a store, you need to see where the where the service point is as a patron, as a customer, and also as the librarian, you need to be able to see your customers. So when you have more walls and corners, that's much harder, which is why you require more service points because you don't want people just wandering around a building and having no one um, who sees them needing help and you can grab them. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. And I see Bob Berman had his hand up first there. Go for it, Bob. Uh, uh, very well done, Leah. I know. I, I, think you spelled, I think you spelled your committee spelled a lot of things out. The differences between new versus reno, renovate and add on. Uh, my only comment on the whole thing is when I take a look at the costs, I see the costs are relevant in trying to decide whether we're going to do new or renovate and add because there's no real difference. And all along, there hasn't been a real difference. Uh, so I, I, I don't think any, I don't think cost plays any, has any real bearing in our decision as to which way to go. I think that the decision really is uh, which makes the most sense to do. And my one concern about going with new, which I'm sure can be addressed, is as you brought up, Leah, we, we the, the building needs to resemble to some extent the same concept as Town Hall does. We need to retain that Broomfield image that the current Prosser Library front does when, when you look at it and you look at the front of Town Hall. I think that can be done. The architects can do that relatively easily when they do the design of the outside. So I'm not, I'm not that concerned with it. It's just a point I think needs to be. Needs yeah, to be that's, we had a really fruitful discussion about that. Um, 
at our meeting on Saturday as well as at the library board meeting last night. And um, we, and it's something I've certainly come around on as well after talking to some of our subcommittee members and community members. I do think that that's really important. Um, I think as Mark will point out that um, it does have to go by the, the design committee in town. Um, but I do think that that's valuable. People are familiar with the original building. Um, it's a comforting thing to them. It's, a, it's something that they know. And I, but like you said, I do think that's something that's possible. It's very possible to bring in elements of the original building and bring in elements that match with um, Town Hall. That I feel like the world is our oyster and I'm sure Taisu would agree with that. Thank you. Yeah. Bob, anything else before I turn over to Ava? Just one very quick thing, and that has to do with uh, uh, the part of the building facing Tunxus Avenue. And I need, we need to keep in mind, number one, the town has very little, if any, say in what the state's going to do in terms of roundabouts. But the ta those are town highways, intersection 178 and 187 or 189. I can never remember which it is. But that's a, those are state highways. The state has control of that. The one thing we need to keep in mind is when it, whatever is done has to keep in mind where the state's right away goes when it comes on the library side of Tunxus Avenue and Mountain Avenue. And I'm not sure where that line is. I think the current design is, is far enough back away from where that where the right of way is, but, but I'm hoping that it definitely is. I don't, that's the one concern I have because it, the existing library, I think, is awful tight to the right of way. Thank you. I have three or four feet spare. That's about it. Okay. That's, Ava? that's my only comments. Ava? Um, yeah, I wanted to chime in and, and I'll speak for the library board. Um, we met last night and we had a very collegial extended conversation about the preference of the board. Um, we discussed the fact that we seem to be getting pigeonholed in a sort of binary choice, you know, new design, old design. And by no means is that the case. We, we have purposely um, signed on with the gold standard architectural firm. We depend on an architectural firm to reflect what it is that we want to see in a new building. And I think that we have already seen that TSKP is working with us on this. I have no reason to expect that that would not continue. So we discussed the idea that the library needs to reflect the history of Bloomfield, it also needs to, re to reflect Bloomfield's present and have an eye toward Bloomfield's future because Bloomfield has changed, it continues to change, but there are elements that are important all along this timeline. So we discussed the idea that um, design features can reflect various aspects of the current building there may be a way to retain pieces. I know that in Hartford, Greg had already mentioned, the um, park project will include a facade from um, the older building. We talked about the fact that, you know, in modern building sites, we see that every single thing is retained when a building is disassembled. All of those lovely bricks may be available for various uses. They may be part of the building they can be walkways to Town Hall, to the Town Green, to Philly Park. They may form the plaza. They might be integrated with a buy a brick fundraiser. But we felt that it is entirely possible to have the functionality and the efficiency of design that the new building would have and still be able to have the building reflect all that we see in Bloomfield. And that's necessary for the building to be the heart of Bloomfield. So I will report that we had a unanimous vote of the Board of Trustees to have the new building, but to reflect all of what's important and dear to Bloomfield in the new design. And we have every confidence that TSKP can do that for us. 
Thank you. I think I see Budunzi next. Thank you. Um, I, I still have grave concerns. I mean, everyone on this call and the discussion has been, you know, it's not the budget, it's not the budget. I beg to differ. It is the budget and it is the bottom line cost. And I, I really think that some, some of us are not conscious as to some of the struggles that some of our neighbors are going through okay, or may possibly go through as a result of coronavirus, as a fallout, as a result of coronavirus. You, the, this last week, the town council, okay, approved 1.6% increase on the taxpayers' mill rate, which will go up. And then you, then you want to put this type of financial burden that Nancy has already said in a previous meeting is going to take us 20 years to pay off. Okay, all for the aesthetics. Also, no, I say we 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 should be very diligent because the town is not really growing in size, and I'm afraid that that either this won't pass or if it does pass, the town will decrease. I want it to pass because I've been raised with this library here in town. I think we all are deserving and this community is deserving of new libraries. But I think we need to be very prudent with the cost and especially when a large demographic are senior citizens. And I don't think any, I don't think that's, I don't think enough consideration it's placed on that. So if it means that we need to decrease the new building, decrease the size to make it more affordable, because initially on we requested a sliding scale, what will $13 million get us? What will $14 million get us? I think we need to look more in line as to something much more prudent than that. If you think that this is gonna survive referendum, because I have grave concerns that as long as we're spending like money isn't an object, that this will be DOA and it will have been a complete waste of everyone's time to where we don't see the fruits of our labor of all these meetings we've been having, the time and the money that will have been wasted that we have paid to Tai Su Kim and that we will pay to Downs and have paid to Downs as well as the burgers. So I that's that's just my concern and it's been my concern. And I hate to, to keep on going down the road and, and it's still a concern because it doesn't seem to be a value of importance to this overall committee. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, Elizabeth is next. Yes, good evening, everyone. I wanted to comment to say that the Bloomfield Public Library staff is in favor of the rebuild, um, a new build specifically, and that is for a lot of reasons, but the biggest reason being that we wanna be able to be as responsive to our community and serve as many people in our community as possible. And having a new building will allow us to fulfill our mission in a much broader way. Thank you, uh, Mark. Yeah, well, first I wanna thank uh, TSKP and Downs for being so quick on the ball here and keeping us up to date on these little changes. Uh, so we have the latest information. I think it's very important. Um, it's an interesting process. You know, we're not gonna see final drawings. We're not gonna see final numbers, but yet, that's how this process goes. It, it moves forward. And I, for one, am very comfortable uh, moving forward. I think we have a ton of information here with us. Uh, as, as Ava said, we've got you know, a great team here that's gonna continue to work with us and develop this thing. Um, I, for one, uh, very cost conscious. I think, I think we all are very cost conscious. Uh, and um, if we're gonna arbitrarily uh, cut function um, on this project, I'm out of here right now. That would be a waste of time if we're just arbitrarily making this project smaller. Uh, I think everybody's done a great job uh, in saying what this library needs to be. 
Uh, we need the opportunity to share that with the community. We're gonna be doing that next with the town council and the community. Uh, and everybody will be weighing in on that. And then we can all decide collectively whether we move forward or not. But I think we've, you know, we've gathered together all the right information to, to go forward at this point. Thanks, Thank Rick. You. Thank you, Bob Berman. Uh, I'm just gonna be very brief. Uh, for Donzi, when I said the cost is, at this point is irrelevant at the, in terms of deciding whether we do new or renovate and add, because the numbers are virtually identical. In no way did I say that the numbers were good and I'm comfortable with the numbers. To remember at the last meeting, I raised the issue that of what can pass at a referendum. And we need to be aware of that. But the decision tonight is not what the cost is. The decision is which direction do we go in? Do we go for new or do we go for renovate and add when it comes to Prosser? Uh, as a simple decision in turn, when it comes to it, because as, as we've seen from two sets of numbers, the cost differential is virtually irrelevant because there really isn't any. And I think you either misunderstood what I would said, but I'm not sure what, thank you. Okay. Abe, <clears throat> hey, I don't know if your hand was still up or if that's a new one. Okay. Any other comments? Michelle. Unmute yourself. You're muted. There you go. Okay. okay, thank you. Didn't even want to unmute on me. I'm having my difficulties. Well, it's been an interesting conversation that I've just heard. And it's also interesting how when we listen to our opinions, they sound so absolute. And doing what I've done for most of my life in a professional vein, I found out the hard way oftentimes that it's not exactly what we want that matters. But being able to have the kind of ear that it takes to listen to all points of view, and particularly in this situation, those of us who are not here, the residents of Bloomfield, take some imagination. It takes some telephone calls. It takes sometimes a very difficult time to let go of your own opinions, whether they be good or not so good. So where I am right now is I am thinking that we have gone almost 180 degrees from our last meeting, where as I recall, if Lois will tell me if I'm correct, that there was a straw vote conducted by the chair with regard to choice of concept at that time. And it was the opposite of what is being proposed this evening. So obviously there has been some consideration that has been influenced and that's what it is when you live in a republic. So I will say that from the standpoint of what my point of view is, I'm looking at a situation where I think that the decision that we are asked to make and for the benefit of the public watching, the um, new business discussion is described as discussion and possible recommendation regarding new or renovated Prosser Library. In case anybody was wondering about that, we got sort of convoluted at times. And I would say that the vote that I gave at our last meeting is sort of like somebody said, the cost is irrelevant. Well, my vote was irrelevant, I guess, although I don't believe cost is irrelevant in any proposal under any circumstance, but we'll get to that. I think that from the standpoint of information that I would need to make any kind of valid decision on behalf of the people that I represent, people who live in Bloomfield, plus my co-commissioners with regard to collaboration, that there are serious deficiencies in the information that I would need in order to make a fair decision this evening. And the first one of those serious deficiencies would be site traffic and safety issues from the standpoint of both projects, but particularly 
on the addition item number two, even though that's not what our motion is about. I am concerned specifically about phase turns on Mountain Road, which nobody has brought into play, into and out of the library and the parking area at Riley Lumber, into and out of the hardware store entrance, which is still shown on both concepts, whether they're to be used or not, or whether DOT will allow them or not, or whether or not the interaction of the roundabouts will even allow them to be used and pedestrian safety in particular, which was brought up from the standpoint of dropping off people at the front of the building, which hasn't been discussed before. And also on Mountain Road, because as we all know, there's a bus stop over there. So we would have turning phases in and out in four, four directions on Mountain Road. We don't have the opinion of an expert with regard to the impact on the traffic coming in and out, we don't have the advice of a traffic engineer with regard to safety features that could be built into that, no matter which of these concepts is selected. So the second thing that I would be concerned about is the main entrance, which has been further described this evening, which made it easier to understand, hasn't been provided before. I will get to that in my next comment that has to do with when you have information that's uh, supplied to you in dribs and drabs, it's very difficult to come up with a cohesive opinion of what you are being told, no matter what your professional expertise is. And being spoon fed this information has not been helpful. I realize that changes come to us as they are made and as questions are asked. However, there are too many questions where both the exterior and the interior of the library and how they will be designed will affect how this project works. And I'm not interested in approving any project that I don't have a pretty clear idea of how it will work. Some of the examples I can give you are entering the library from the footbridge. What will I see? What will my experience be? Entering the library from under the building, from the parking area. Well, we were given a little bit more information this evening on that. Not impressed with that either. Um, from the standpoint of how the building will look on the exterior, I've already made my opinion about that plane. My conclusion with regard to that is in order to understand how all of these things will impact the use and design of this building, it's critical to have not complete elevational architectural information, but conceptual. We don't have that. As I mentioned before, we are the customer and I expect to be provided the enough information to be able to make a relevant decision. It's just as relevant as cost and square footage. Do we have to approve a plan in order to see what's in it? I would hope we don't follow that tradition. It's been problematical enough to suggest that the process that we have used up until now has provided us with all of the information that we need to make a sound decision on a workable project, which is gonna be the best project we can get for every dollar we spend. I suggest that we don't have such a process. Maybe it's clear to some, not clear to me, from the standpoint of, I have a feeling we will be told that it isn't sufficient as we go down the road. I regret that because an awful lot of work has been done here. But to, to take the word of someone who is going to not give you the information that you need to make a relevant, important decision. It's like saying to someone, trust me. Well, you don't do that as a consumer in the marketplace. I'm sure you don't, I don't. And I am not asking for a level of detail that would be hardship oriented or cost people a lot of money. But I don't want a surprise at the end. I'm not gonna vote for a project that requires me to have a surprise at the end. So from the standpoint of concept one or concept two, I originally said that I would not vote for new build nor will I vote for a new build now, but it would not appear that I get the opportunity to vote for addition concept building uh, item number two. 
I can't tell you how disappointed I am because I've seen these projects go before. I don't know what the rush is. We have time on our milestone list. What I'm looking for is a quality project delivered on time for the least possible cost. So I will be voting no. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Uh, next, uh, any other comments on the motion? Yes, I. Uh, this is Jesse. I uh, apologize for my tardiness. I had a, another um, meeting. Um, however, you know, I, I believe I understand what the the motion is on the table, and my thought is that we should move ahead with um, a new build. And I think uh, mainly, you know, for me, it is the current state of of our library, which I don't believe um, is adequate enough uh, for um, the population that we serve, right? And then the other piece is I feel that you know we're going to have to spend some money at some point. Um, the the other the thing is, are we going to pay for pay less now, um, and then you know end up having to pay again, or do we want to just do it new, fresh, um, do it well, and then um, you know not to, not have to pay as much later? I think we need to pay a little bit more now, and then you know later on we won't have to worry about that expense, but. Um, you know, from, from what I understand, the, the state of the library at this point is such that we do need to, to move forward. Thank you. Move the question, Mr. Chairman. This is the uh, United States of America. That's the beauty of this. We all, can all have our own opinions. We've been appointed to the committee. You vote the way you feel you should vote. But move the question, Mr. Chairman, so we can now move to the next phase of design. Thank you, Bob. But before you did that, Christine had her hand up and I wanted to allow her to do that and then I will call the question. Um, thank you, um, Greg, and I thank everyone for what I've heard tonight. Um, first of all, um, when I was asked to be a part of this particular committee in our town, um, I was elated because I am a person that enjoys the library. Um, being at the current state, when I've atten um, gone there, I've often wondered when the town would begin to do something as it relates to improvements or, or addition. And since being on the committee, I've learned a great deal about the process. I respect it immensely. A lot of hard work and great leaders are on this committee. And I think again, everyone that is working, chairing, subbing as a sub chair is working to, on our behalf as a town if I step back. so. I really want that to come out. That's one thing that I've seen a lot of hard work and I think there's a lot of good intention um, as it relates to what persons want to do with our town and the library. I am for a new building. I am for a new site. I think uh, as a resident and as a committee person um, that would um, bode us well. Um, I think we need to be expansive on our services what I have to do, because I visit libraries a lot, um, and again, working at a university, I know that our town needs to be um, better equipped to serve students, whether whatever age um, they are, especially our high school students. So I think, again, an upgrade, new digs would, be, would do as well. I also want the library to be reflective of the town I live in. And, and what I've been hearing is a need, a desire that will bring that to pass. I am concerned, like Michelle, the only thing that kind of put a lot of questions in my mind tonight, which I think we can still work that through, would be safety and traffic and safety. Um, that still, I can't visually, um, by just looking at it through a Zoom meeting, conceptualize what that would look like. So that is my major concern. And if those questions would be answered about traffic and safety, that would help me. So I do, um, Greg and others, vote for a new building that would enhance uh, what we would like to do in our community, for our schools, for our seniors. And again, we are asked to think on behalf of citizens. And I think we're doing that. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to call the question uh, Nancy, can you read the motion? 
or repeat the motion before we vote? You're muted. Okay. The motion was to authorize Taisu Kim Partners to proceed with a new uh, new build Prosser Library. And it was made by um, Bob Ike, seconded by Mark. Okay, great. All right. Having the motion read, uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye or raising hand so we can get a count. Aye. 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 Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, all opposed. Opposed, and you can't see me right now, but I'm opposed. Opposed. Budunzi and Michelle are opposed. Any abstentions? Oh, Nancy, I forgot. Well, Nancy, oh, you <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so it's seven to two. Correct. Thank you. Uh, that is the end of the new business. Uh, our next meeting is uh, next Wednesday, uh, the 21st. And I just want to, again, thank everyone for their time. Thank you so much for the robust discussion and conversation around the plans. And a big thanks to Taisu Kim Partners, along with Downs Construction and uh, everyone on the call. Uh, we will see you next Wednesday. And again, before, uh, before we go there on next Wednesday, I will be on vacation. I'll be returning Wednesday afternoon. So I will be sending out the agenda on Friday. Any additional materials can be emailed. Um, I won't have access to email, so we'll send them out either amongst yourselves or I can reach send them out Wednesday afternoon. So just wanted to give you the heads up as to why you'll be getting an agenda on Friday for a Wednesday meeting. Okay, great. And thank you. I may not be at next Wednesday's meeting as well because that is a conflict with another standing meeting uh, that I have. So I will, uh, I will I will most likely not be at this meeting. Can I can I suggest then that whatever Greg, would you be able to set accept any uh, materials that need to come to the committee and send them out to us? Yes, I will make sure, yes, I will make sure that we all have the materials in advance of the meeting. Rather than wait till Nancy's back Wednesday. Yes, I will do my best. Yes. All right, so thank you, Greg. Okay, again, thank you all, and uh, we will see you soon. Nancy, have a wonderful vacation. Thank you. Observe it. Good official leave. All right. Um, <laughs> I move we adjourn. Thank you. All right. Thanks, thanks, Greg. Wait, who made the motion oh. to adjourn? I missed it. I did. No moved. I did. Bob and Bob. Bob and Bob. Bob. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Take care, all. <laughs>